Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, into the Banshee Cup playoffs. My name is Bahamut. We're here in the second semifinal matchup of the day. These are all best of fives. After this, we're going into our third best of five, which will be the upper bracket final. Winner of the previous series versus the winner of this series. We've got a Vinland Raiders on the left-hand side. Space Goofs will be on the right. This is Haunted Minds map number one, chosen by the tournament. Uh, we do have uh, Meta Madness style of draft. Heroes that are picked and played are unavailable. We do have the Bounty system system going on right now still so if you draft a butcher and if you draft this hero and win with it butcher chogal nova asmodan gazlo murky probius valira kill Pazad, you can win 50 bucks on top of whatever you win in your top four placement because there's only four teams left right now so we're buying these are the top four teams so the worst you can do is fourth place plus whatever bounties you've done uh, on that note, there's also Twin Blades Varian, Monstrosity Abathur, all Alliance, all Horde. You cannot use skins, so you can't take Johanna and use the jo uh, use the Horde skin for her. That doesn't count. It has to be a Horde lore character. All Overwatch, all Starcraft, all Diablo, Triple Healer, No Healer, and Juice Pirates. From my understanding, there's been one bounty actually finished in the since the conception of this last weekend. So we'll see if anyone goes for it today in this second best of five of the afternoon. I guess it's the morning, wherever you are. Uh, let's see. If you're watching here on Twitch, be sure to follow. If you'd like to support further, it's much appreciated. If you'd like to subscribe, get yourself some ad-free viewing. You uh, push our sub goal up and you do support the good boy that is Bandit. And last but not least, if you're watching on YouTube, be sure to like and subscribe so we can grow the YouTube page. If you have multiple Google accounts, use multiple Google accounts to uh, subscribe to the channel so that way we can grow that faster. If we hit 1,000 subs on the YouTube side of things, we can monetize that channel and that's a little extra scratch for Bandit. That's all the spiel I do believe I have for all of you. We get into Haunted Minds. First pick, Lucy on the left-hand side with a Maev, Johanna. Oh, that's not a Johanna. That's a Urel. Hogger and Blaze band away. Yeah, the, the generator I have, it was like 300-ish bucks. And as I said, it's just, it's just, it's just, it's enough if things, it's enough to, to, to like, it's a quality of life thing. Like, I could, I could run 50% of my office. Like, I could, I don't think I could run, like, my PC and all my monitors and lights and this. But I could probably run, like, a couple monitors, my audio, my PC, and, like, it, and, and, like, a internet and router. Like, I could probably run... Like if I if Spectrum provides internet, I could run a stream still with the generator. That's really the purpose of it. Um, knock on wood, I haven't needed to do that, but it's there if we need it. And then if if we get a multi-day power outage and I need to use the generator for something, I I got it. So, what's up? Forget what? How you doing, bud? You're making pasta sauce while listening. What are you gonna use that pasta sauce for? Are you making lasagna again? Oh, lasagna. Oh, lasagna. All right, uh, do 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 do. Malfield band away. Obviously going to be Chogall. No, they're going to be building a bruisery composition. Um, what if they juice pirates on the side of space goofs? I doubt it, but could be funny. What's up, Yanthor? Good to see you, bud. Runs from 5 to 10k for a generator and install, if not more, depending on the generator. Yeah. I know, I know, I know it gets really expensive on the installation side of things with especially the gas. The gas, inst the, the gas, the gas installation stuff, that's where I, from my understanding, that's where it really gets expensive because, um, that gas installers can charge you an arm and a leg for this kind of stuff. Like, I remember when I first moved up here, I actually, I called an electrician. And I was talking to him, I was like, hey, I want to, like, hook up, like, a like a generator, like, thing in my electrical panel. Like, not a whole house generator, but for me to be able to buy, like, a nice generator and plug it into the uh, electric panel. And the dude was like, dude, honestly, it's so expensive. It's not worth it. Literally just go buy, like, a tailgating generator or a construction site generator where you can just, like, plug in an extension cord and then you can get, like, an extension, like, uh, thingy. I'm blanking on the name. A surge protector. He's like, just honestly, just do that. Run the cable, like run, like run at your backyard. Run the cable in through your living room, and your your Bob's your uncle. He's not, but uh, Artanis, where's Crushinator? We've got an Artanis. We've got the Artanis for the people. Uh, I don't think it's gonna be Juice Pirates, especially with a Malfurion on the right hand side and the first pick Lucio on the left. Not today. I got free ravioli from the store coupons, so that and meatballs. 
We're all going to forget what's for dinner, everybody. Ravioli, ravioli, great barrier reef. Um, Shimada Bros? Do we get a Hanzo to wrap up this draft? No, they're gonna go Jaina for burst ability, okay. All right. Okie dokie. Interesting. Anyways, I gotta buy a new UPS uh, soon. I mean, it's not like it's gonna get delivered anytime soon either. So, but I, I need to I need to kind of figure it out today. Get it ordered so that way when whenever the deliveries start back up in in the city, I have a gut feeling I'm gonna need to go to the uh, post post office to go pick up my mail. I have a gut feeling that Tahoe is not going to deliver mail for a couple weeks again. Uh, Haunted Mines, Vinland Raiders versus Space Gooks. Oh, I have, uh, I started rewatching. I started rewatching Community because I haven't been able to play Final Fantasy VII uh, Rebirth because it hasn't been delivered to me yet because UPS doesn't want to deliver to me because there's a giant snowstorm. So I was like, all right, well, let's let's watch something that's going to make me giggle. Man, dude, season one of Community, God, it's so good. All right, right-hand side of the map, second best of five of the day. Thanks, everyone, for hanging out with me. I appreciate it greatly. We have got Space Goofs in the red with a Tyrael played by Playa, Dobby on your Genji, Dayquaza to play the Chen, X-Ray on Malfurion, and Yasu will be your Jaina. Left side of the map, the people got it. The people wanted it. We've got a Nano Artanis. We'll see a uh, Crankle Johanna. Sven on your Sonya. Hunter Arc Lucio. And Gaff will be the Cassio. All right, let's get our gambles going here in just a moment. We'll check out our first little scuffle and see what does go on. Best of luck to all of you. Actually, we're going to see Visions grabbed. Chen flying kicks in. Going to go Freshest Ingredients level 1. Good synergy with the level 4. We've got Protector of Ire. We all know everyone loves Protector of Ire because of the dings. You know what we should do, honestly? We should just, like, lock into the to Artanis. We should just lock into the Artanis vision just so we can hear all those delicious dings. Just kidding. We're not going to do that for the game. What we're actually going to do is set up that prediction for all of you wonderful... Oh, I can't say humans. <laughs> All of you things at home. Uh, Tony T, thank you for the follow. Glad you're enjoying the stream. Thank you, Ash Mantle, for the call out. And let's get into it. Gamble's up and available. Malfurion, the first one to go down. 12 stacks on our Tannis Protector of Ire. Vinland Raiders with the first kill. Objective phase will be up and available in a minute or so. Until then, grab some camps, grab some wave soak, and harass the Sven in top lane, apparently. Another... Warpaint Sonya pick up here. Probably gonna see Wrath of Berserker again. We, did, we actually saw Warpaint Sonya earlier today. Camp, Sapper Camp would grabbed in the bottom lane. We got 5.2 to 5.3. Nicely, nicely done. We got some odds. Dobby, sorry, it was just Dob Dobby. I saw our chance going in on Dobby. I was like, all right, we getting we getting a good team fight on this. We actually do have a great team fight. Yasu, 53 HP, is going to be reduced down to nothing. The camp invade will be achieved. And this is going to be... Oh, actually, it's not double camp. This camp was leashed. They go for the invade. They get it. They get the kill. 2-0 to zero in kills. Favorite inside of Vinland Raiders, who get one. Two, three sappers in. Are you classified as human? Me? I don't know. Body blocks are pretty good from the members of Space, or excuse me, of uh, Vinland Raiders. Oh, 38 HP, I think, was the lowest I saw Tyrael go. 40 for sure. Able to get over that wall and get away, Genji. Swift Strike, nice kill on to Lucio. Gaff getting low, goes down. Nano will fall as well, and that is a beautiful for the side of Space Goofs who pull in a chunk of experience. And here's the thing, chat. 10 seconds, I believe, we get the announcement on our objective. But... Vinland Raiders will have everyone respawn and back in position, so it's not that big of a deal. I mean, it's the internet. No one knows if you're a dog or a cat. Right, Tan? Johanna hearts out of top. Oh, nope. No, she doesn't. Just kidding. Dayquaza delays that. 
blade dash phase prism swap attempt from Nano. No connection right there. Sappers in bottom lane will be cleared out in lane. Space Goose just get the experience from the camp. Siege Giants in bottom lane, and here are the Risen Miners and the Grave Golem up and available down in the mines. We see an actual immediate dive down over here. Risen Miners being a quick priority for both sides. We actually see Genji try and steal a few of these away. Swift Strike out as well. I think he did get a couple right there. Nano, though, still continuing to pressure onto the enemies. We've got uh, Chet on the high side of the mines, working on some of these Risen Miners over here. Artanis already cleaning up the right and the bottom. Actually, have a few of those skulls for free, but I think the team fight might happen once again. Jahana pulling to the left-hand side or the northwest side of this mine. Cassia finishing out the southeast or the bottom right. Sven spinning. Shot of Fury level 4. There's a free little skull right there for Dobby to pick up. Nobody can tell if I'm a dog or a cat. Exactly, Zig the Cat. Wait a second. You must be an armadillo. It's obvious. It's obvious. It's Zig, I see through the miasma. It's obvious. Gaff may also see through the miasma, but also might be looking at the enemy fight from the Hall of Storms for the next 19 seconds because that's a nice little collapse onto the Cassia. She does go down, and this will be the last 28 skulls from this grave golem in the mines here going over the side of Space Goops, who will pull ahead here in the amount of skulls for their grave golem. Experience-wise, it's going to be 7-7 seven to seven overall for the Siege. It's looking pretty good for both teams. Sonya's actually going to slam her way through a Sapper Camp. That'll be a nice buff to top lane Siege as well, since they do have this Grave Golem with 40. Bottom lane, Grave Golem with 60, so 20% better. I, I, that's 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 what I would assume. I don't know if that 20% is correct or not. We can actually take a look and see. Someone in chat might be able to do the math for us. I can provide you some stats. Sins exposed from the Johanna level 7. Reduces some healing for a little bit right there. How long is that healing reduction? 35% for 3 seconds. Chen, flying kicks in. No wandering keg available. Another Sins exposed. Gaff getting a little bit low here. Chen kicks in once again. Big slam from the Grave Golem. Actually creates enough space for Gaff to back away. Goes in for the Fen and it's Tyrael the one to go down. Uh, why are we locked onto things? What are you doing? Alright, so 23,640 HP and 457 damage. The bottom lane one, 29,271 HP and 566 damage. We round up on numbers. Nano tries to get the trait to proc. Kill. For the side of Space Goops, who had a wobbly beginning, but are having a really good time in this early to mid game. No matter. There are always more skulls to be had. There are always more skulls to be had, Gravekeeper. You make a good point. I don't know why I'm talking like this. Level 10s are almost here. Let's cycle through the other numbers, get an idea of what the damage healing experience looks like so far. Map number one of our second best of five of the day. We have three best of fives in total for all of you, if I'm not mistaken. We, we, have, we have tried to make a deal with the snow gods in, in the hopes that they allow us to stream. As I said, let me stream, and then literally the pow you, can, you can have the power go out. I am, I am cool with that. I will sit and read more of my book. Speaking of, anyone uh, anyone reading anything good? <laughs> kind of in a lull phase right here, as we're waiting for 10 Talentiers to trickle in, and teams are kind of poking at each other. I'm like halfway through the Aeronauts win list, and it's been, it's been interesting. It's a lot of characters, though. It's a lot of characters, and I feel like they just keep introducing characters, and it's like... It's a lot, it's a lot of characters for me to keep track of. I guess if you're sitting there and reading it like consistently, it's not that big of a deal, but. We've got a Ring of Frost, Tranquility, Wandering Keg, X-Strike, and an, a Sanctification. Sony, as we talked about earlier, is gonna go Wrath of Berserker. It's active currently. Bless Shield for the Johanna, High Five Lucio, Suppression Pulse on the Artanis, and Ball Lightning on the Cassia. Grave Golems will growl and summon here in 15 seconds. Sappers in this top lane get some decent value. 
Nano, 106 stacks on uh, Artanis. Able to pick up a few more actually on that Genji in the sustained chase. Under Dark Trilogy. Hmm. Just finished Snowstorm in August was really good. What's Snowstorm? My next book is the second book in the roughest uh, Name of the Wind, or not Name of the Wind, um, Kingslayer Chronicles. I always forget the name of the, the second book. Isn't like the third book like the door of something? Wandering Keg active for Chen, Tranquility for the Malfurion as well. Suppression Pulse activated by the Artanis as Johanna's trying to pressure onto the Malfurion. Jane is done with her level one. Drops a Ring of Frost, no connection onto the enemy. We have a Sanctification activated by the Tyrael. Gaff getting low, Swift Strike from the Genji and Chen. Finds the last little bit of damage, but that Swift Strike gets a reset from that Chen kill. X-Ray will go down, X-Strike from Dobby, connecting into Nano, who will be the one to fall next. It's gonna be a two for one, as the mines are gonna be activated here. A little bit of back and forth dancing between the mines and the top layer, and that will be in top lane. A nice triple kill for the side of Space Goofs. Meanwhile, Sonya was working through some of those Skeletal Defenders, but she's going to have to back away and go for the Constellation Prize that is the Sapper Camp. Now, 50-some Skeletal Defenders remain, or the um, Risen Miners, actually. So if all of these go over to the side of Space Goofs, well, they'll have 50-some on their Brave Golem. Snowstorm in August... Oh, oh, Snowstorm in August is the name of the book. Got you, sorry. Uh, rogue cop versus cartel type shit. Ooh. One man gets angry. And he's got to stop a bunch of bad guys. Did I mention they have his kid? Something like that. Mystery of does it uh does it do Erdin escape from the Miserable? What? what? <laughs> I thought for a second you were just messing with me. I thought you were just making up words. <laughs> Subdue from Johanna's finished out completely. Fifty nine. Up oh, 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 up. Oh. It's right there. Someone's got to go get it. Uh, the, the books that I really, really want to read are, are... I really want to read something that's just Souls-like, where it's one one Tarnished running around killing giant creatures and bosses to then become the new Tarnished, or the, the, new, the new Lord of Cinder. I just... I need to find a D&D... &D, I need to... Not a D&D. &D, I need to find a Dark Souls lore book and just read that. That's what I gotta find. Or I guess maybe the YouTube videos. Anyways, Dobby gets the dismount onto Sonya. Sven does have the Rather Berserker active. Grave Golem summoning, this time 40 to 60. Space Goofs uh, with the stronger Grave Golem. This one gonna be slamming, jamming for 617 in damage. 37,077 HP. In the bottom lane, this is going to be a smaller little lad, 29,945 HP with uh, 948, or excuse me, 498 on uh, on that damage into structures. There are made up words. Oh no, I just, I thought you were literally just messing with me. <laughs> Okay, so the Grave Golems get, like, no value. Cartel drops a million of dollars of cocaine from helicopters in New York City, kills people, he takes it personally, cleans up on, clean up on aisle five. That's actually pretty interesting. So is he, like, Batman? Got a Wandering Keg activated by the Chen. Camp will be picked up by the side of Space Goof. Sanctification activated by Tyrael. We do have Sven trying to back away. Extract from Genji is going to get some decent damage, but Jane is going to be the one to freeze up the enemy heroes. They're going to be taking a bit of a... Ice snap? I don't know. I, I got nothing. Anyways, it's going to be a quadra kill for the side of Space Goofs. Sonya... Sonya runs away. Coward! Uh, bottom lane will lose its fort. Chen goes to top lane to clear the camp.
I also I also absolutely loved the um uh Oh, what's the trilogy name? Southern Reach Trilogy. I really like the Southern Reach Trilogy. That was fantastic. Very, 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 very much like that. I, I actually like I I speed ran through that that those three books. They're not that long, but I I definitely just sat there and just burned through them. Not so much Batman, just out for vengeance. Ah, so he's Liam Neeson and Taken. Got it. <laughs> I'm not trying to I'm not trying to like I don't know, I'm not trying to, to lesser the value of, of the series, just, just, we're making goofs. We're making space goofs! A hundred risen, or excuse me, hundred skulls to be collected here in the mines. Third objective phase of the game. Got a good chunk of them already going over to space goofs, who have managed to grab a siege giant camp for bottom lane. Um, sorry, just looking at camp timers, but the mine thing gets in the way. Well, quarter of the way and then some through these Risen Miners. X-Ray does not want to get left behind. They're actually going to go for... No, they're going to go for the lower side of this, but this is going to be where our team fight should break out. Sven will discover our Genji. Chen has enough to share. A little Blade Dash swap from the Artanis. A very low Cassia. Nope. Tyriel is the one who's going to be going down. It did have Sanctification, just unable to push the button in time. Gonna get some death timer or cooldown reduction from his trait. We have a swap from Artanis. Yasu getting really low. Uses the improved ice block, but that Jaina's still dead. Lucio takes her down. Nano is gonna be falling as well. It is a trade in that department. Dobby unable to get out in time as that was a beautiful boop from Lucio. And now Sonya sticks around in bottom for during the uh, in the mines for this grave golem chunk of skulls. Diminish the value of your book. There you go. Sorry, I could not think of the word diminish. Can't think of many words today, apparently. Up the frequency for Lucio, level 16. Tyrael throws in, throws out his Eldruin's Might. He's gonna try and steal away a few of these skeleton or these mine mine skulls. You actually have Chen jumping in here as well. He's unable to steal any. Oh, 69 to 30. There's one there's one skull on the bottom right of the screen. I actually really hope that the members of Vinland Raiders don't get the next skull, but that does not matter. Lucio is going to be Boostio, Burstio. He's, he's dead. Crankle is going to get chased down as well. I don't see a world where they live. Uh, that will be Nano and Sven able to back away. 69 skulls to the side of Vinland Raiders. Very nice, very nice. Punisher 2 Electric Boogaloo, you're s don't, don't apologize. <laughs> Anyways. 9 to 17 and kills, we got a bit of a bloodier game here between these two teams. More camps to be grabbed as the objective phase is slowly but surely summoning here in lane. Thank you, Ton, I appreciate it. Ends. Class is not very awake today, huh? Y'all, y'all are still sleepy. Y'all, how many of you are still laying in bed? Come on now. I can't blame you, honestly. I woke up at five and I was like, oh, I'm gonna lay here for ten more minutes. <laughs> okay. Nice blade dash swap, trying to get the the excuse me the grave golem stun. Looks like they're gonna let this bottom lane push. Look how small he is! Such a little lad pushing in bottom lane. We'll check on that a little bit later, but right now, Rad Berserker from Sven has popped, and the members of Vinland Raiders, they really wanna make something happen here in this top lane. Wandering Keg from Chen pushing people around. Material Holy Ground is also creating some space. We got Roots from Malfurion. Me, me, not me, I'm peeling garlic. You can peel garlic in bed. Forget what, don't let your dreams be dreams. Courage is the magic that turns dreams into reality. Quote, Kratos. Not, 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 not from God of War. The, the Kratos from the anime, um, Tales of Symphonia, that's it. 
253 stacks for her. Our Chan is still. Subdue is done, as I mentioned. Level 1 for Chen. Precious ingredients finished. Janus Fingers of Frost is done. Improved Ice Block is as well. Or the Frost Bite. Sorry, just pain in the back of my knee. Ouch. Okay, wow, it's 17 to 9 in kills. Uh, where's my experience thingy? Uh, where is it being made up in? Uh, passive is 3,000. So that's, that kind of closes the gap a little bit, but otherwise it's still a 5,000 experience difference between the two teams, which is going to be... Wrong button, Chris. I don't know where I'm at today. Uh, that is going to be level 20 faster for the side of Space Goofs, and can they find something with this? Can anything be achieved through 20 talents here advantage for the next half level? They're gonna get a camp, so there's that. Genji Shuriken Mastery has already been finished out. He's got Holy Arena for the Tyrael, X Strike Living Weapon. Purifying Brew for the Chen. We'll see the Lunar Shower, Malfurion, and Ice Blink for the uh, Jaina. Keep in mind that it's the, the chill all nearby targets. So it's not it's not like Sylvanas where it's just a blink or ETC where it's a blink. It's like Kerrigan, like Psionic Shift where you have that extra little value or Thrall with his uh, wind, wind Blink. I forget the name of the actual term for it. We'll call it Wind Blink because it activates his Wind Fury. But 20 talents here will trickle in for the side of Vinland Raiders. That might be their opportunity to take it to the face of the enemy. They might be able to take it to the bridge. Holy ground thrown down by Tyrael, trying to block the enemies from backing away. A bless shield from Johanna ripped immediately. Sanctification comes down from Tyrael. He does have that holy arena as well, so that's extra damage for the allies inside. But... Malfurion trying to heal through this. The Tranquility will expire, and Tyrael's the one to go down. Ball lightning from Cassia coming out, and Gav is starting to mop up this fight. That's going to be a Swift Strike out from Genji. They're going to move in through, or move out through bottom lane. Malfurion drops the root. Emerald Dreams gets the sleep, only under Artanis. He's going to immediately just blade dash and work through the wave. Meanwhile, Sonya's going to try and head them off at the pass. No, she's going for a top lane keep. They want to end right now. Okay. Take it to the chorus. No, you just take it to the bridge. Whatever that means. X-Ray, goodbye. Dobby, Swift strikes away, saving their KDA in map one. But this will be the end of map number one. A good team fight for the side of Vinland Raiders. They're gonna clear out the enemy. Genji jumps out. Will he be taken out here? Dobby is going to go down. Picked up by the side of Vinland Raiders. GG, well played, Vinland Raiders. Took them a little extra time, but they figured out the Achilles heel for Space Goofs, and uh, I guess you could actually say they removed their oxygen supply, and Space Goofs will be choked out in map number one. That's dark. <laughs> oxygen tank removed. Space Goofs, they're dead. <laughs> Nice, 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 Gaff. Nice, 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 nice. <gasps> Is that the Foxington in my channel? Get out of town. Get out of town. Oh my god. I'm gonna get all sweaty all of a sudden. All right, uh, let's pay out the people. Vinland Raiders did win. My copy is not stuck in the mail because of Alterac Pass. My 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 copy of Final Fantasy is stuck in the mail because it is. Uh, we got uh, 65 inches of snow over three days, which is uh, 155 cm roughly, somewhere in that ballpark. 155 cm for our European friends. Welcome in, ladies and gentlemen. Map number two in our second best of five of the day. We have another best of five coming up after this, which is the upper bracket finals, which will be the winner of this series and the winner of the previous series going up against each other in another best of five. Alterac Pass will be map number two. It's looking like the side of Space Goofs, who did lose map number one, opted in for first pick priority. 
and uh, this will give map choice over the side of Vinland Raiders. As a reminder, this is best of five. We're in Meta Madness style of draft. Because Tahoe looks like Alterac Pack, Alterac, Alterac Pass currently. It does. It really does. It's so beautiful outside. I was talking to the very pretty woman at the PT place, and she was telling, like, because, like, it's it's the normal thing. Like, when you talk to someone in Tahoe, like, you excited for the storm? So she was asking. She's like, you excited for the storm? I'm like, yeah, you know, like, bummed out that I can't shovel everything, but, you know, snow blowing. I get to go play in the snow with Bandit a little bit. Um, and so I was asking her. I was like, yeah, usually, you know, usually, like, lay in front of the, like, lay in front of the, the, the double doors and, like, you know, watch the snow fall when it's nighttime. It's nice and pretty. And so I asked her, I was like, oh, so, like, do you do anything fun for snowstorms? Because I was telling her, I was like, yeah, sometimes I rewatch, like, Lord of the Rings or something like that. It's nice to throw on, like, a like a long fantasy movie. And she's like, oh, it's kind of dumb, but I do this thing called Canadian ice cream. And, and um, apparently, this is a, apparently this is a thing. Apparently, you go and get a bowl of fresh snow, and then you put maple syrup on top of it. And apparently that's called Canadian ice cream. I'll give it a shot. I got maple syrup. I've definitely got a lot of snow. Hogger will be your first pick on the right-hand side for Space Goofs. We'll have a Sylvanas, Rhaegar, Anubarak, Junkrat banned away. As a reminder, Meta Madness style of draft. The heroes that are banned are only banned away for the map draft. So map two, excuse me, map three, four, uh, map three, which is a guarantee, four or five, which as it's a best of five, we could see these heroes if they're not banned away or picked on different maps. So, Blaze, Brightwing will be the start for the Vinland Raiders. They've got a global in that Blaze. Uh, keep in mind the bounties are still a thing. Uh, we could see a bounty being built up for Space Goofs. We could see a Monstrosity Abathur. Uh, there were a few Monstrosity Abathur attempts last weekend. None of them were successful, unfortunately. Big surprise as Ultimate Evolution is so much better. We will be seeing the Hanzo Anduin. All right, so gotta think about light bomb targets or light bomb synergies. Johanna's up and available, Falling Sword. Genji's already been played, so no, nothing with him. Diablo is an option. Could see light bomb Diablo. Hogger Hortipult is already kind of a synergy in there. Looks like they're gonna get rid of the Garrosh. Maybe the members of Vinland Raiders are the ones that are gonna lean into a Diablo. If the Garrosh is being banned away, maybe that's kind of a um, signal, a, a, a spotlight, if you will, that it's they're leaning into that Diablo pick. Or it could be a draft bait. Could be saying, oh, we're going to ban away Garrosh and we're going to take Diablo. And maybe they're not, maybe that intending. They're going to get rid of the Maiev. Diablo's still an option. Muradin's still an option. Wait, Diablo's still an option, right? Yeah. Forgot who was already played in map number one. Oh wait, was Johanna played in map one? Maybe, uh, maybe. Yeah, she was, because I talked about subdue. So never mind. Johanna's not up and available. That's incorrect on my end. Just a comment on Canadian ice cream. You need real maple syrup, not Aunt Jemima. One, Aunt Jemima's really, really good as a substitute. Two, I buy real maple syrup. I, I do. That's I. Eggs. Uh, eggs or something, eggs, butter, and like maple syrup are the things I'll splurge on. But the thing is like maple syrup, like you buy like one good jar of maple syrup and you're set for at least six months, depending on how much you eat Eggos and stuff. But even then, like I bought, I, yeah, like I, I probably buy a good jar of maple syrup every six months. Ready to roll out. But I agree with you, forget what. It is, it, it does make a difference. But Aunt Jemima is a good substitute. Fuck Log Cabin. I've been swearing a lot today. I apologize. Uh, Sergeant Hammer Varian with the Hanzo Andu and Hogger. Okay, so it's a Protect the Hammer comp. You know, we could see Holy Word Salvation. No, Polymorph, Jet Propulsion, Shadow Charge. There's way too many interrupts, so never mind. We won't see that. It's going to be a light bomb game. Uh, Chromie as the answer? I really like the Vinland Raider draft. I think Vinland Raiders have a beautiful draft. I think they've actually got a game-winning draft here. I think I think I think this is a game-winning draft. But that is not for me to decide. That is for you to decide as we get into the cast.
As a reminder, uh, if you're watching here on Twitch or YouTube, be sure, well, big thing on YouTube, if you're, if you're watching there, let me know what your thoughts on the music being added in to the casting sections. It's something new we're trying. I, I, in the past, I never had the music in-game active, so we're trying a new thing for when the game's being casted to have some music on as well, so. Um, not sure if it's something that y'all like. We'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. But if you're on YouTube side of things, let me know how it sounds, or if you like it, if you're here on Twitch, you're welcome to give me feedback live. Or not. You can just chill. I don't mind. I don't mind. It's fine. It's fine. I'm not hungry. Anyways. Hmm. Can I get to this fast enough? Nope, I can't. Sorry, there was the, the birds are starting to uh, play in the snow a little bit, so I was going to try and show you guys what the mountain chickadees are up in the tree. I'll try and remember to eat some Canadian ice cream tonight so I can let you guys know how it is tomorrow. Left side of Alterac Pass, we've got Gaff playing Tracer, Hunter Orc on the Brightwing, a Chromie to be played by Nano, Blaze played by Sven, and last but not least, Crankle on Diablo. I agree, Chromie. Yay! Heroes of the Storm. Right side, Space Goose looking to make a 1-1 happen here in this best of five series and equalize through Alterac Pass. Ply on your Varian, Yasu, Sergeant Hammer. Dobby is your Hanzo. Dequaza will be the Hogger. And last but not least, X-Ray on the Anduin. Give me a second here while I write up a prediction. I forgot to do that as we were loading in. Okay. Just to comment on American ice cream, you need real guns. <laughs> yeah, I heard I heard um I heard that if you get um chocolate chips, you actually just get like little bullets in your in your ice cream. The chocolate is actually compressed gunpowder. <laughs> I was gonna make a I was gonna make a joke about moose tracks, but you know, moose tracks you, you, no one should ever insult moose tracks. Oh I miss ice cream. I hate being lactose intolerant. I hate eating ice cream and then feeling like I'm going to die. Well, mostly vomit and then die. But I will say there's some bomb ass sorbet out there. That I, that I can have. Fruit based sorbets, mm mm girl. All right, let's start out a Twitch prediction. That's what I should have got for this snowstorm. And I know that's a weird thing, but honestly, some ice cream in a snowstorm sounds great. Hammer will go down. First kill of the game over to the side of Vinland Raiders. Not, that, not sure if that sways any of your gambles, but the Twitch prediction is up and available if you'd like to make a Twitch prediction. Uh, Dobby's getting beat up in bottom lane, but there's no actual kill onto the Hanzo. Alrighty. At Horal Anomaly for our Chromie, level 4, level 2. Hunger spins. A little bit of sustained damage onto Dayquaza from Gaff. Pulse Bomb misclicked right there. Crankle in mid gets a nice fire stomp through the enemies, but uh, it's still very early, and Diablo has only gotten into Soul Shield level 1. Ice cream anytime is great. I agree. Cookie dough ice cream. Mint chocolate chip. I'm a mint chocolate chip dude. I love mint chocolate chip. Moose Tracks is always a tasty one. Vanilla bean if you're just feeling simple. I will say this, I'm not a toppings person. I don't like toppings on my ice cream. Like sprinkles and stuff. Nice charge into the wall into Yasu. Sven misses the jet propulsion. Pulse bomb from Tracer connects and Yasu, once again, taken down here, bullying onto the Sergeant Hammer. 2K to 1,200, we got odds for our Twitch gamble here. Thank you very much, chat. Oh man. Aside from the power outages for stream and stuff, I personally, I love snowstorms. I mean, that's that's the reason I moved to a mountain town, man. I love, I love the mountains. I love getting the snowstorms. I like being snowed in. I love going out and snow blowing and stuff. I don't know. It's it, like, it's a blast for me. And I know that's weird to some people because like the idea of me, like for me, the idea of sitting on a beach, like that's, it's not unappealing, but it's like sitting in the hot sun as a ginger. No, thank you. Granted, there is the niceness when you get way too hot, you just walk into the water and you cool off, and then, you know, you literally rinse and repeat. 
Also, the nice thing about the winter is you can just add layers when you're cold. In the summer, you can't take your skin off. I mean, you can, it's just gross. <laughs> Seven talents here for both sides. 14 stacks on the deep breathing for the Chromie. She picks up actually 16 off this hammer siege in mid, and uh, they take down the fort front gate. Timeout onto, is that Anduin, I think? Might have misread that right there. Tracer in top lane still sustaining damage onto Hogger, but he's not low at all. Actually, Hogger's the one putting pressure onto Tracer as he has the dense blasting powder level seven, allowing him to use his uh, staggering blow to spawn more easy throw dynamites. Oh, nice. Yeah, Chromie finishes out deep breathing. She's got the Morbius loop level f uh, seven, level five. Jet Propulsion, Taunted by Varian. And if you're like, why didn't that happen? Because Taunt is a silence. Silence a hero and force them to attack Varian for 1.5 seconds. 1.25 seconds. You can put on as many clothes as you want, but can only take off so much before you're arrested. See, see Demon, I agree. Yes, that's a very good point. Inserting a fact of the day, the CD was the, was first introduced in Japan in 1982. From 1982 to 2004, about 30 billion CDs were sold worldwide. From 2004 to 2007, 170 billion CDs were sold. Oh, that's actually kind of crazy. That's insane. Didn't Japan just stop using floppy disks? Like, does didn't didn't like didn't Japan literally just swap off of using floppy disks or something like that? Didn't they have like an archa a very archaic method of like data storage? For a country that's so technologically advanced and considered to be ahead of the times in so many different technological departments. I mean, hell, they have Gundams. Where's our Gundams in the United States? We're too busy, we're too busy. <laughs> See, this is, this is, we need to, we need to, we need to get rid of all of our guns and then build Gundams. That's what we need to focus on as a country. Yes, we're gonna take away your guns, but it's to build a giant mech. <laughs> Chromie's gonna be taken to the beach by Chromie. I actually didn't think she was gonna fall there, but nice pick off by Nano, who's gonna hearth out for full mana. So anyways, <laughs> first objective still up and available. We know this because it's 30 seconds of channel time. There's also only two jailers. First objective has 30 seconds of channel time, two jailers to defend. Second objective phase is gonna have 40 seconds of channel time and three jailers to defend. And then third and onward is 50 with four jailers to defend. Once they, have, they, they uh, once they weaponize a real Gundam suit, the U.S. will have that, that train wreck. You make a very good point. <laughs> once, once the U.S. is like, wait a minute, we could sink billions of of military dollars into this. Yes, absolutely. Why should we feed the citizens of our country when we could just have war items? Yay! Dragon's arrow from Hanzo connecting. He finishes out his simple geometry at seven minutes and one second. More scatters to spawn off the wall as we do have the objective phase. Zoned by Diablo's lightning breath. Nano getting a little bit low. The Stormbow does not connect from Dobby, and that might have been enough to maybe... No, I wouldn't have taken down, but it's, it got them low for sure. Time trap onto Hanzo. Diablo should... Oh, wow. Blink heal from Brightwing. She tries to save a huge time trap, but Diablo's so dead. Staggering blow into the wall. His souls will be expended. Did you start warm? <laughs> Hi, Rob Dog. Good to see you today, bud. Happy Saturday to you. I hope you and the family are nice and cozy. Thanks for coming by the stream. According to Futurism, they create a CD sized disc capable of holding over 40,000 DVDs or roughly 4,000 4, times. The density of a Blu-ray disc. Dang, dude. I I, I, I can't think of 40,000 movies that I'd, I'd want on a disc. Lord of the Rings Extended Edition Fellowship, Two Towers. <laughs> I could think of maybe like a couple hundred movies, not 40,000. 
I guess you could say like all of Arnold, all of Stallone. That'd be a good chunk right there. Big dragon's arrow from Hanzo met with a BFG, but once again, Sergeant Hammer goes to the beach. Man, Chromie is really gunking up those gears with all that sand she's providing. Tracer chasing in with the pulse bomb. Dayquaza gets hit with a parting gift, but the divine stars from X-Ray from Anduin are enough to keep him alive. And the objective phase will expire. All forts have been peeled away on the side by of space goofs. Clickbaity article, but I put it in Discord. Nah, whatever. It's interesting. It's not like those Bloodborne articles where it's like, Sony has addressed Bloodborne, uh, has, has addressed the fact that they've never worked on Bloodborne. And then like you look at the article and it, it's like, Sony has announced that they understand that there's a big Bloodborne community and that people want a sequel. That's literally it. It's like, okay, cool. Yeah, wow. It's never gonna happen, chat. It's never gonna happen. Sony laid off 900 people. They canceled a live service Twisted Metal game. Dude, I was, ah. Uh, dude, I was, I was rooting. After how well the, the Twisted Metal TV show did, I was like, they gotta make a new game, dude. I love Twisted Metal. And then, and then to find out that on top of the 900 people that were fired or uh, let go from Sony, they also canceled a live service. So, li and, and live service, like, dude, think about it. Like, Twisted Metal Battle Royale? That would be amazing. Like, Twisted Metal 99? Hanzo goes down, because I'm talking about random stuff. Brightwing was able to get that kill through bottom lane. Diablo Shadow charges in. The boss takes down the keep in bottom. Typically, we need to see at least two keeps to fall, unless there's a massive team kill here. Death timers are relatively long. They're like, what, 30 seconds? 35. I don't know if that's enough. I mean, they literally need to kill everyone right now, and I don't think it's going to happen. As about as likely as a HOTS re revival from Microsoft, yeah. Hey, chat, only six more months until the rumor mills begin around the next BlizzCon about there being another HOTS revival. And every day someone will come to chat being like, Bahamut! You think they're gonna do it? <clears throat> so, we've got half of the channel just about in favor for Vinland Raiders. Tracer, just pushing up bottom lane a little bit, varying zones. Nice interrupt from Blaze and Chromie onto the Jailers going for the channel. Shadow charge in from Diablo. Full Fire Stomp build. Gonna throw those Fire Stomp out. Get a nice chunk of heal. He actually gets back to full souls because of that. Lightning Breath activated. The objective phase will go over to the side of Vinland Raiders. Space Goofs. Temporal Loop. X-Ray, you got a secondary charge. Absolutely gets that in time. The Dragon's Arrow from Hanzo not connecting onto the enemy, but Sven. Yeah, that's a nice Polymorph from Hunter Orc turning Dobby into a pig. And that does allow Hunter Orc to also blink heal away. The mid lane fort is going to get chunked quite heavily by this mid camp that was pushed in. But I don't think the fort will fall. Diablo closes the distance onto Hanzo with the shadows charge onto a minion. Mid fort is actually going to be falling. Yasu tanks a ton of damage. Blaze, do you have bunker? Not for another 63 seconds. Blaze does go down to Sergeant Hammer. Overpower shadow charge displaces Dayquaza. A fire stomp heals up Crankle a little bit more. Hammer barraging through the mid lane objective. Diablo mounted up, and Ply is able to uh, ally charge from his level 10. Also does have the Juggernaut. There's another Temporal Loop, Polymorph. There's no way there's a Leap of Faith available. Desperate Prayer activated. Stuck in a loop from Chromie as Ply uses the allied charge once again to just get into a different direction away from Chromie's siege damage. We, er, uh, from our, our artillery. We do have uh, Drek'thar clearing out bottom. He's not going to go down. Dayquaza clears out top. Mid lane, as I mentioned, already cleared out as well. And this will be the objective phase ending. Six to nine in kills. Nine favoring Vinland Raiders, but a nice amount of kills here in map number two in our second best of three of the day. And Vinland Raiders looking for a 
an advantage. They're looking to go up in the series 2-0, to o, and they just have to win one more map, but they've got one more keep at least to go through. They still have their bottom lane fort, so that's consistent Reaver minions into the core, but these Reaver minions, while they do tank a lot of damage, and they have that 50 physical armor, as I always like to show you all, they don't deal extra damage into structures as it's 98 for attack damage and damage versus structures. But there's that physical armor, and that 50 physical armor allows them to push these waves up. And if there was another one that, uh, if, if mid lane keep does go down, that could be the opportunity. Big shockwave from Hogger in the backline. Pulse smile onto Yasu as Tracer blinks away. Polymorph, a temporal loop onto play. There's a good Dragon's Arrow from Hanzo stuck in a loop onto Varian. He's pulled back in. Hogger does not get a good bounce. This could be the beginning of the end as they do take down the Varian. 50 seconds of death timer on average. 10 seconds on boss or top. They could look at boss. And uh, yeah, I don't, I don't hate this idea. The Hammer Umbrella defense is kind of annoying to deal with. So I love this call. Go for boss in top lane. Confirm the keep with that. And, like, you, you can probably, you probably need to deal, what, 25, 30 so percent of the damage of the keep and let the boss do the rest? Hanzo will try and get the consolation prize in bottom. Dobby is gonna have to, yeah, he's gonna need some help on this. I actually see retreat pings being called out. Because, yeah, there's already, this, this top lane boss is already finished out. They need to get into defensive positions ahead of time. Well, they've already got the keep down to 50%. 20 talents here. Invisible friends get stuffed. Diablo Hellgate. We've got stuck in a loop as we already saw. And incinerator gauntlets. Or excuse me, burn notice for the blades. This is an old joke in CCL. If you don't take bunker, fortified bunker, you lose the game. And maybe this is it. Yasu is going to get chunked right now. Sven goes in. Nicely done. Drops down that bunker. And boss moving in towards Drekthar. Two keeps have fallen. Hammer out for 53 seconds. All five members plus boss are pushing on a Drekthar. And Vinland Raiders, they want this to be a 2-0 advantage into the map number three in this best of five series. And they might just get it. Big pulse bomb from Tracer. Drekthar dropping down below 50%. A shockwave from Hogger goes out. Dobby gets the natural agility over the wall, but that's not going to be enough because he's going to the beach with Anduin. That is going to be Chromie taking down Hanzo Anduin. Drekthar falls and GG well played. That will be map number two to the side of Vinland Raiders. All right, let's pay out the people and let's go ahead and run a block of ads and get ready for our map number three in this best of three, best of five series. Now's a good time to remind you that if you would like to not get ads or you'd like to support the stream, now's a really good time to gift subs, resubscribe, all that good stuff. Uh, we are 18 subs away from our little hot bingo tournament for a sub goal. If you'd like to push up for that, if not, heck you. Just kidding. See you in a second. When my best, <coughs> excuse me, when my best friend was visiting when I first moved up here, we were driving around. I was like showing him the areas, and literally we were driving back from Emerald Bay, and he just looks at me, and goes Emerald Bay, and I was like, oh my god, you're right. <laughs> to the Spider Queen, map number three in our second best of five of the day. My name is Bahamut. We are massively distracted. I hope you're all having a great Sunday, Saturday, and uh, thanks for being here. Please look at Discord to view the sauce. I like sauce. I like sauce. Ooh, that is gonna give me some wicked heartburn. You know what you should you know what you should make forget what? And I don't like usually it's better over like a couple days, but you should make some focaccia bread for later. Some focaccia bread would go so well with that, and it's so easy. It's literally just salt, rosemary, or Italian, like there's like I have Italian blend seasoning that I use for mine. But it's literally like salt. Uh, flour, olive oil, and rosemary if you have it, or some sort of Italian seasoning. That would actually go really, really well with that. 
I live two hours south of Seattle. And, uh, heck, the snow. Not supposed to snow here. I love snow. I love snow. That's why I moved to a mountain town. I literally was getting a cup of tea, and I saw one of my... So one of my neighbors... He has a two-stage snowblower. So there's 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 a stage one snowblower, which is typically like the little one you see, which has the, the, the paddles. They're like yay big. Two sta stage two and stage three snowblowers, they 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 look the same. Stage three has a different sort of auger on it, and it usually is a little bit more powerful and expensive, but stage two is very common. So my neighbor's got his stage two or three Honda, and he's doing all this stuff, and then his wife has got a stage one little snowblower, and it's it's kind of comical because she's like She's just catching the snow that's currently fall falling. Like it's, it's just, it was, I looked outside and I was like, oh, okay. Like <laughs> it just, it was just really funny to me. Anyways, you already have a loaf of farmer bread from the farmer's, oh, okay. Well, if you have some bread, then that's whatever. I just, I would just, I look at that sauce and I was like, focaccia bread would go so well with that. I actually need to make a batch of focaccia bread for myself. We have a... God, I'm so distracted. Sorry, chat. We have a uh, Medivh and Mephisto band away. I haven't even had a beer and I'm distracted as all hell. What is going on today? I blame... I don't know. I'll blame Twitch chat. Uther, Garrosh on the left-hand side. So, Stun City potential. Tassadar, Urel. It is Tomb of the Spider Queen. Tassadar does offer up some decent wave clear. Um, probably gonna be Psionic Storm build. That's the common build we see, but I, I personally love doing a uh, Kyderian Amulet. Love that bouncing attack ability. I love the, the, the auto attack scaling. There's some really, really good augments at, uh, well, there's the Executioner's Will at, at 13. This is really, really good. Uh, but I like to go Psy Storm 13, 16. It's just so powerful. Either way, Ana's gonna be banned. No nano boosted Tassadar. Makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I'm gonna make I'm gonna make some focaccia bread dough after stream today because I, I usually let it sit in the fridge for like three days before I bake it. I usually let it just sit in the fridge for three days and it, it gets really really nice and um, what's the what's what what happens? It, it gets a lot of those air pockets. That's what it is. Kerrigan will be banned away as well. So oh yeah, she works actually with the Stun City composition on the left hand side. Is it gonna be double support? Okay, it could be double support hyper carry Vala. We could see like an Ariel. I actually, I like, I know double support's kind of like boring and boo and whatever, but like Ariel would be fantastic. You'd have so much CC potential. I actually, like, I really, really hope they go into an Ariel. I don't think they will. I think it's going to be some sort of mage, but I'd love to see an Ariel or a, uh, the, the, the Tame Strike's the big factor. Anubrak wants to dive, Sylvanas wants to have that, you know, haunting wave in. It just it just gives you one more form of, of control for the fight. But I, I don't think that's going to be the case. I think they're going to go into some sort of mage for wave clear. Kael'thas, actually Gul'dan is fantastic on this map. I don't hate a Gul'dan whatsoever. Uh, his poke is really good, his team fighting, the Horrify is beautiful as well. Yeah, honestly, if they, if they don't go into... Chat. It's like, it's like... It's like, it's like this is my job to cast games and analyze things. Oh my God. Can we get some poggies in the chat for Bahamut and his beautiful brain? Can we get some amazing, can we get some, can we get some, oh my God, uh, uh, you're so amazing comments on YouTube? <laughs> All right, the tea is steeped long enough through the draft. So now I can go ahead and throw out this tea bag and drink tea that is slightly too hot. No! Oh, I'm gonna go cry now. I'm gonna go cry. You can get some Sunday, Saturday gravy. Did I say Sunday again? Dude, I don't know why. My brain... My brain has been so off this week. I'm gonna blame, I blame the leap year. I blame that there was 29 days in February. I blame that there were 29 days in February this year. At, to be honest, the 29th day of February threw me off so hard. I was like, 
Because I had convinced myself that there were 29 days normally, and then I was like, wait a minute, no they're not. Left side of the map, we're going to be going into Doom and the Spider Queen with Vinland Raiders. Sven playing Rexar, Crankle on the Garage, Gaff playing your, your Hypercarry Vala, Hunter Orc on the Uther, Misha, of course, played by Misha, and last but not least, we've got Nano on the Ariel that I so beautifully predicted. It's not about having a crystal ball chat, it's about looking at a draft and understanding what works best, and I am very proud of myself for that. Space Goofs on the right. Well, they're down in this best of five series. They need to start winning some maps. Maybe they've gone to the broom closet and got a few sweepers out. We've got play on the Anubarak. Dobby play your Sylvanas. Dequaza, Yorel, X-Ray on the Deckard Kane. And Yasu will round things out with Tassadar. Hyper carry composition for the side of Vinland Raiders. A nice sort of siege, wave clear. Kind of checking all boxes on the side of Space Goofs. We'll see who's going to come out on top of this. Auto attack build for the Vala. We have uh, Hammer the Lightbringer for the Uther. He'll look for 75 auto attacks. And that's a nice, well, as I mentioned, stun city composition. Flare for Rexar. Always the fun thing to bring up with this. It is a 20 second cooldown with 20 seconds of act active time. Meaning, the moment Flare expires, you can throw out another Flare. So, in theory, it has a 100% uptime. I guess you could say it's like a 98% uptime. Because there's probably like casting time and blah 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 but there's a the, the vast majority of its duration is 100 percent or the vast majority of its duration is 100 percent god what phrasing toss on to anubrak who burrows to safety in his fort front gate aria with the detainment strike all right start prediction which team's gonna win map number three Betting this is a leap year since it's the 35th anniversary of Quantum Leap. Happy Quantum Leap Year. Oh. Pro tip from Bronze 5. When the caster's predicting Ari, will take Nova. No, yeah, yeah, good choice. Yeah, 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 that's true. That's very true. All right. Whoa, we got some big ga We got some big numbers already on this one. I like to see it. All right. We have Crankle throwing Yorel away. Dobby gets onto the point. Haunting Wave does not get the teleport in time. And that is first blood over to the side of Vinland Raiders. Uh, not too sure. Maybe there was a Misha charge and that actually delayed things out. Yorel, Righteous Hammer creates enough space to get this camp. And Decker Kane throws down the scroll of ceiling. It's got the Sapphire level four. And these Siege Giants will get little to no value. One of them's already been cleared out. The other is getting into lane. And the Vala and friends, you know, they'll make quick work of the Siege Giant. It's going to throw a few rocks into lane and that's about it. Toss combo. Newbrack's able to burrow away. Not that big of a deal for the time being. Yorel hit by a groundbreaker. Garrosh did go into unrivaled strength level one. He's not picking up the warbreaker stackage. Misha gets chunked here and she does go down. That's a quarter kill to the enemy as uh, Space Goose will have potion of shielding for the Decker Kane level four. We'll also see that electric fence from Tassadar. Might see the force barrier level 20. Savannah's with possession. Well, if we get to level 20. Tomb of the Spider Queen is one of those maps that it's either very quick or very long. I, I feel like there's no in-between. It's either 12 or 25 minutes. <laughs> also, fun little Easter egg for anyone at home. Left click on that little gem that's sparkling there in your own games. I can't do it because I'm an observer and I can only click on units and such. All right, Gamble's been closed out. Uh, 9K to 2.5, 19, not too bad. Thank you everyone for participating today. 75 stacks just about for the Uther here. Only 24 on the Vala. But she has not died. She also has that Death Dealer level four, so you're gonna see her vaulting around a lot. And you might be like, why is she vaulting so much? Well, it's actually the last little sentence of this. If the attack kills its victim within 1.5 seconds, the mana cost and cooldown of vault are refunded. So that's also something to keep in mind right there. So Vala is gonna be utilizing that to try and get some extra damage onto these waves and clear things out faster. But also keep keep in mind Death Dealer value into enemy heroes. Uh, we did see there was there was one time this is back in the Raven Court in houses. I can't remember who it was, and there's a clip somewhere actually on my Twitch channel of it. There was a Death Dealer auto attack Vala who went Acrobat at level 20, and dear lord, like the, the Vault reset Death Dealer big bursting damage was insanity. And you know, Manticore and all that kind of stuff. Vala's gonna get the kill onto Anubra. Gaff gets a good heal at the last second from Nano. Thought that tower shot was gonna take down the Vala, and that would have been an awkward trade, but not going to be an awkward at all. Dobby is gonna be dismounted. The haunting wave is, oh no, no, not again. 
not like this. Oh, man. Boom, oh, Sylvanas will be taken down once again. 3 to 0 in kills. Well, I guess it's 3 to... 3 to 2.5 in kills, because Misha did get taken down once. We'll go ahead and cycle through the other numbers, get an idea of what the damage, healing, and experience looks like between both these two teams. As turn in for Hunter Orc, we'll summon the Blue Web Weavers for the side of Vinland Raiders. Vala gonna reset for full mana. Little bit of HP. Until then, it's just gonna be setting up for the objective phase summoning. Not too shabby so far. We'll see some little bit of wave clear from the side of Space Goofs while the Vala was resetting. But Web Weavers have descended. Gaff's with the team. Gonna just vault around here as he's. Oh, wait, hold on. That's gonna be a nice detainment strike into the wall after a toss from Garage. The Sapphire, excuse me, the Emerald from Decker Kane thrown out as well. That's gonna be 75% healing reduction for three seconds, if I'm not mistaken. Tacitar doing his best to. Throw some shock rays out to clear things out, but this web weaver in top lane, it's very healthy still. I mean, it's below 50%, but that key or that fort's very, very low by comparison. Uh, they should be able to take this down. Death wave coming out from the web weaver. Top lane fort will fall. Rexar and Misha doing things in bottom. X ray's been. Oh, he's dead. The old man sent back to the retirement home. We shouldn't say that. Maybe, maybe, you know what? Maybe he's maybe he's able to handle himself on his own, and maybe he's just got a hobby of building ships inside of bottles. So he's gonna go and do that for the next seven seconds. <laughs> maybe he's not that feeble and frail as, as I as I mock him for. Five stacks on the repeated defense for Ariel out of the six. That's gonna be extra damage baseline or the passive enemies hit by detainment strike are knocked twenty five percent further. I wish, like, I wish we had a common thread on the way that tooltips were written. Like, I wish, like, I know this has questing stuff, but I wish there was the literal passive at the bottom. I wish it just read passive at the bottom. Enemy heroes, enemies hit by detainment strike are knocked 25% further. Like, obviously we had multiple different devs working on this team, or excuse me, working on this game, different teams at points as well. So obviously the lingo and the way things were written were changed. I just wish there was that common thread through it all. I just wish this game to, to survive, but you know, we do our best casting grassroots, we do our best to create content, and maybe, maybe one day, maybe one day, Mike Morheim Studio will come out with HOTS 3.0. You never know. Maybe that's what Dustin Browder's working on. Maybe that's what they're doing in Dreamhaven and, and Moonshot Door thing. Detainment Strike gets its last stack. Gath getting really low. Hunter Orc ally tossed away. Cocoon onto the Ariel. We do have those 10 Talenteers at the top. Black Hole from Tassadar will be coming out. That's a lot of damage onto the Uther, but he's fine. The Rain of Vengeance dropped by the Vala. Wailing Arrow coming in from Sylvanas, and it's just not enough. Tassadar will go down. They trade the Misha. Ariel traded as well. It's a 2 for 1.25, realistically. And Vala continues vaulting. She was looking for more there, but it looks like this Web Weaver phase will confirm bottom fort. Savannah's making quick work of mid. And I think she'll be able to clear that out before the enemy can really do. Yeah, nice possession as well, just to bolster the wave. Crankle gets dismounted. Haunting wave over to the allies. Big wave in top, though. Humongous wave, actually. It's going to take down the, fort, the keep front gate. Dobby gets black arrows. No, no black arrows. I think that's unstable poison. No. Just festering wounds value, never mind. Garrosh and Anubarak here don't see each other, they're just anchoring on the opposing sides. Garrosh will actually see the Anubarak there, as he did throw that in impale. Throw out that impale. But he's able to back away, no big deal. Burrow in from Anubarak just finds the minion wave. Groundbreaker, detainment strike. There's going to be a lot of damage. Indomitable activated. Misha sacrifice once again. Stay well and listen is going to time out before the cocoon from Tess, uh, or excuse me, from uh, Nubrak. That's going to be a self crystal agus right there, but she dead. Sven, the next target, 14 gems. He's bopped into the wall, throws down a flare, and that'll be 14 gems going out. But it wasn't any sort of the. Uh, well, I guess, you know, that was near half the turn in. Speaking of, turn in will be for Space Goofs. They want this third. They want this map four. They do not want to get 3 0'd and drop down to the lower bracket semifinal for tomorrow morning. 
As a reminder, tomorrow will be the last day of Banshee Cup. We'll have the lower bracket semifinal best of five, lower bracket final best of five, and then the grand final best of seven, which I believe is unweighted. I believe the team that comes from the upper bracket gets first pick and map pick priority. I do believe. Can I actually check this? Does it say? Uh, upper bracket team has map pick and the choice between first pick and SP on map one. Oh, first pick or and sec or second pick, I guess. Crystal A gets at the last second, but Canary will drop a heal at the end. She will get thrown out. The Divine Shield thrown onto her, but ooh, Crank will get a little bit low here. Dayquaza. Oh, hold on. Gaff wants to get the big burst damage and we'll find it. Reset City for Vala vaulting, and she gets the double kill into the Ariel. Excuse me, into the Urel and the Tassadar. Beautifully done. Bottom fork goes down. Rex Armisha managed top. Bottom lane Webweaver, decent, but that's Rex already. Hearthing back to go manage that bottom lane wave. And so, Garrosh has found a flank. I'm sorry. Stay well and listen. Catches a few. Good cleanse. Unfortunately, there's no other way to step in for this, and the minion will take a tower shot or two. That'll be mid fork going down. Boss is up and available in 50 seconds. So that'll put us about 10 minute 30, or excuse me, 11 minute 30-ish in game time. There is a siege camp for bottom. Bruiser camp on the right is 30 seconds. Bruiser camp on the left is two minute 30. Vala keeping her hatred up off the wave. Maybe takes out the sidewall. Sidewalls do provide vision for the enemy. As you can see right there, a little bit of vision, but it's not a ton. Uh, turn in is 54 out of 60 on the left hand side. Space goofs with only seven in the pocket, so three, uh, excuse me, two waves for Vinland Raiders, and they'll be able to get the summoning of the Web Weaver, and Garrosh is going to get uh, top? No, nope, they're going to group up as five, okay. Nine to three in kills. Vinland Raiders, yeah, they start turning in here, as I mentioned. They're one more wave away, and that'll be discovered through top. Actually, they could go boss Web Weavers. They've got 16 talents here advantage. Uh, who's got the last little bit of the turn in? It's Rexar. They tag the, oh, wait, no, hold on. Uh, it's Garrosh and Rexar need to turn in. Vala starts this. 16 talent tier difference, though. I mean, well, it's 17 to 15. That's going to be an Ardent Defender activated by Urel. Emerald from Deckard came thrown out, connecting onto the Garrosh. There's a Cocoon on to Vala. She asked for some help. Dayquaza helped out by the Electric Fence of Tassadar. Vala vaulting in, trying to close the distance quickly, but seems like the disengage is going to be called from the set of Space Goofs. Now the question, oh wait, hold on, maybe not. That's gonna be a groundbreaker combo attempted on, wow, goodbye, Anubarak. Stunned, there's no Ardent Defender for Urel, but the Electric Fence from Tassadar, the Force Wall, pushes back the enemy. Uh, is there a tag onto boss? Oh, there is, there is, actually, Gaff was already up here. All right, yeah, boss and Webweavers. Meanwhile, in mid lane, Sylvanas, Urel, Deckard, they're gonna push things up. They're, they're trying to pull the enemy off the boss, but it's not gonna work out. Dayquaza, Avenging Wrath over the wall, is able to mount up and back away, but this is now Webweaver plus boss in top lane, and this is looking like a really healthy push. 13 minutes into Tomb of the Spider Queen, can the members of Vinland Raiders end it here and now? I mean, they've got that Manticore value. Vala chunks by very low on this Anubrak. Anubrak answers with a Cocoon, an immediate kill onto Deckard Kane. Kuhn expires. Nice Righteous Hammer from Urel. 35 seconds left on her Ardent Defender. Stun onto Anubrak. Tassadar trying to shock Ray and poke out the enemies. And meanwhile, Anubrak's trying to create some space, but Sylvanas went down somewhere on this. Anubrak, they're just ignoring him now. They're just like, okay, you're just you're just trying to distract us. The top lane Webweaver's already cleared out. Vala vaults in. There's already a DC. Well, I think actually, I don't think it's a DC. I think that's Dayquaza saying, I am done with today's games. They get 3-0'd. It is going to be uh, Vinland Raiders moving on to our grand, excuse me, the upper bracket final coming up next. If Vinland Raiders beats our opposing side team, that will be Vinland Raiders going to the grand finals with that upper bracket advantage. But GG well played. We're going to find out what's going to happen in that upper bracket uh, final coming up next.
Kalavoth. How you doing today, bud? Well, on that note, let's get ready for our third best of five of the day, upper bracket final. I'm going to go ahead and run a block of ads, and we'll go ahead and get into that next best of five in just a few moments. <laughs> 